Ever feel like you're kind of a puzzle, even to yourself? Well, buckle up because we're diving deep into Beyond Faith and Reason by this guy, Tim Holmes. He takes us on a wild ride through the philosophy of the self, trying to figure out what makes you, you. Yeah, and what's really cool about Holmes is he throws out this whole one self idea. Is that we're actually made up of two selves kind of intertwined, working together. Two selves. All right, you've got my attention. So how does he describe these two selves? He calls them the noumenal self and the phenomenal self. It sounds kind of complicated, but it's actually pretty mind-blowing once you wrap your head around it. Imagine like an atom, right? All that energy, unpredictable, constantly moving. That's kind of what Holmes says. A noumenal self is like this hidden source of all our drives and urges, those raw emotions we don't always even realize are there. So like a hidden engine driving us, even if we don't know what's under the hood. But then how does that connect to the me I see in the mirror every day? You know, my thoughts, my actions, all that. That's where the phenomenal self comes in. It's the you that's out there in the world making decisions, shaping itself based on what you choose and what you experience. It's the part of you that knows it's aware, if that makes sense. Okay. Starting to see how they work together. So it's like my noumenal self, that big ball of energy, throws all these feelings and urges my way, some good, some maybe not so good, and my phenomenal self gets to decide what to do with them. You got it. Yeah. It's almost like those urges are raw materials, and the phenomenal self gets to pick and choose. Which ones do you embrace? Which ones maybe get tossed aside as you build who you are. This choosing process, Holmes calls it categorical pointers. Categorical pointers. Sounds kind of like organizing a super messy room, but instead of socks and books, it's like feelings and instincts we're sorting through. Give me an example. How does this work in real life? Okay, say you get hit with this sudden wave of anger, right? That anger by itself, it doesn't really mean anything, just raw energy. But you, your phenomenal self, you give it context. Maybe you try to figure out where it's coming from. Maybe you express it in a healthy way, or maybe you choose to just let it go. Those choices, those are your categorical pointers. It's the meaning you give those raw emotions that makes you who you are. So it's not just what we feel, but how we choose to define it, how we let it shape us. It's like we're all working with these same basic emotional building blocks, but what makes us unique is how we choose to use them. Exactly. Holmes even compares it to the periodic table. All those elements, right? Each one's different, but deep down, they're all made of the same basic stuff, just arranged differently. Our phenomenal selves, we're kind of like that. We're unique, not because we experience totally different emotions than everyone else, but because of how we choose to understand and respond to them. And you know, all this talk about choice, it leads us to this really interesting idea of freedom. But Holmes, he doesn't see it as this like crazy, do whatever you want kind of freedom. No, he's talking about something way more subtle and honestly, way more important. Okay, so tell me more about this subtle freedom. I'm all ears. All right, so picture this. You're hit with this super strong urge from your noumenal self. Could be anything, right? Like a sudden urge to just do something impulsive, a random burst of fear, even a wave of creativity. Holmes says there's this tiny gap, this little space between that urge and how you react to it. And that space, that pause, that's where freedom lives. So I'm imagining like, a split second pause in my brain, a moment of silence before I react. It's like when you hit the pause button on a movie, you get a second to think before you hit play and jump back in. Yes, exactly. That pause button moment, that's what he's talking about. That tiny space where you get to reflect. That's freedom. Yeah. It might be tiny, but it's powerful because that's where you choose how you're going to respond to that urge. And that's where responsibility comes in, right? It's not just about having the freedom to choose. It's about owning that choice, whatever happens because of it. You got it. Holmes says responsibility is like you're taking ownership of those choices hmm. and you're letting them actually mold your phenomenal self. Think of it like a sculptor with a chisel, chipping away at a big block of marble, shaping that raw material into something totally unique. Wow, that's a powerful image. So we're not just reacting to these urges. We're actually shaping who we are by the choices we make, the actions we take. Like we're artists and architects all rolled into one, designing our own lives. Exactly. You're getting it. That's the heart of what Holmes is saying. Yeah. That noumenal self, it gives you the raw materials, the urges, the drives, and your freedom that gives you the tools to work with. But it's responsibility that actually puts those tools to work, that shapes you into something unique. I love that. It's such a cool way to think about it. But doesn't that kind of make it sound like there's like a finish line for this whole self-development thing? Like mm. once you've chiseled yourself into your perfect form, you're done. That's where Holmes keeps it real. He's like, nope, this is a journey, not a destination. It's ongoing, always changing, never really finished. It's not about becoming this perfect, 
unchanging self. We're always being shaped and reshaped by our choices and by the world around us. So it's less about reaching some perfect state and more about embracing the journey, right? Yeah. Always growing and changing. Exactly. We're always evolving. Think of it like this continuous sculpture, always being refined, always getting more intricate and interesting. And you know those times you mess up, those mistakes, those things you might call failures, those are part of the process too. They make you who you are. They add to that unique complexity. Okay, that's actually kind of comforting. So if I'm never really done, that means there's always hope, right? I can keep growing and changing for the better. 100%. It's about embracing the fact that you're dynamic, that you're always becoming. I'm really into this idea of constant growth. But Holmes doesn't stop there, does he? He brings up this idea of the castle keep, like the inner fortress of our identity, but he also says it's a place of vulnerability. This is where it gets even more interesting. Holmes argues that our castle keep, that strong sense of self we build, the thing that makes us feel strong, it's also a place where we're vulnerable. Vulnerability. Okay, now you've got me really intrigued, but also a little nervous. Is he saying we should just, like, leave the castle dates wide open? Not quite. What he's getting at is that those vulnerable spots, those places where our defenses aren't as strong, those are actually the places where we can be touched by the world around us. That's what lets us be shaped by our relationships, our experiences, even spiritual stuff. So those chinks in our armor, those are what make us interesting. It's like our imperfections in our experiences. Those become the brushstrokes that add all the depth and color to our self-portrait. Yeah. It's not about erasing them. It's about understanding how they fit into the bigger picture. Exactly. And here's another curveball. Holmes throws our way. Oh. He brings up this concept of spite. Spite. Hmm. Okay. Not exactly the first word that comes to mind when I think about like self-improvement, you know, mm. isn't spite usually a bad thing, something that holds us back. See, that's what's so cool about how Holmes uses it. He's not talking about like holding grudges or wanting to get back at someone. This is deeper. It's this primal urge to just exist, to carve out meaning in a world that doesn't always seem to care. Yeah, I think we've all been there, right? Those moments where you're like, what's the point? Especially when we're struggling or things aren't going our way. So is he saying this spite, this stubborn refusal to give up is actually a good thing? He's saying it can be powerful, definitely. It's that fierce determination, that drive to keep going, to keep making your own way, even when things are tough. It's the spark, you know, the mm -hmm. thing that keeps your fire burning, that helps you get back up when you get knocked down. I like that. It's like saying, yeah, life's going to throw punches, but I'm still standing. That inner strength, that's what gets us through. Exactly. It's about owning that stubborn will to exist, to find your meaning, even if the universe isn't exactly making it easy for you. Man, Holmes really throws down some serious food for thought, doesn't he? This whole idea of the self, this back and forth between what's driving us deep down, the choices we make, even our spite, it's a lot. And it's not just about thinking about ourselves, it's about doing, about being resilient, about never losing that desire to grow. Absolutely. And let's not forget about that vulnerability we were talking about before. It's not a weakness. Yeah. It's like this opening, a way for us to connect more deeply, to grow, to find meaning. You know, it just hit me. Holmes would probably say that even choosing to listen to this deep dive, to really think about these ideas, that's a form of spite, right? That desire to understand ourselves better, to keep asking the big questions, never stop exploring what it means to be human. Totally. And here's a final little nugget from Holmes to chew on. He says even our names, those labels we're giving, they might mean more than we think. It's like they create this space for our own unique identity to grow, to become something real. Whoa, that's kind of tricky when you think about it. So maybe taking a minute to think about our own names, what they mean to us, could give us even more clues about who we are and who we're becoming. It's like he's leaving us with a map, or at least a starting point, for us to keep going on this journey of figuring ourselves out. And that's what makes this deep dive so awesome. It's given us so much to think about, maybe even a few tools to help us navigate this crazy, messy, ultimately amazing adventure of being us. Thanks for being here.